So what we're going to talk about today is why we tell people not to pay a debt collector and what specifically that means. Because in a conversation when I talk to someone, typically they go, oh, I'm about to pay off all my debt. And they think that their credit's going to be raised by paying off debt collection accounts. Mm -hmm. Well, for one, paying off a debt collection does not remove it from your credit report. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have to make sure that the debt collectors are following specific rules. And when I say don't pay a debt collector, it does not mean that you never have to pay it. And it does not mean that you would ever stop paying other bills like your credit card or your mm -hmm. car loan or anything like that. And it also does not mean that the debt, debt collector cannot sue you. So within six years of the time that the account got sent to the debt collection agency, they can legally sue a client. But through our process, we make the debt collection agency prove that they have all the correct information and make it a valid account. So for example, if I have a debt collection account for say 400 bucks, and I rush to pay it, yeah, it's not gonna come off my credit. It's gonna update and sometimes it'll report for seven years from the date of the payment and it just reports as a paid collection. Mm -hmm. So through our process, the debt collector has to prove that they have the right to report on your credit. Um, when we're requesting information from them, they have to show documents with the client's signature. They need to show all of the documentation that they have that really proves that the client owes that debt and they need to furnish all the documentation to prove that, to show it. It's like when you go to court and you file a discovery, they have to show all the evidence. Well, the credit reporting system is quite unfortunate because it's a guilty until proven innocent. Mm -hmm. And so through our process, we're forcing the debt collectors to prove this information. So they need to prove that the, that the debt is valid and collectible, meaning that it hasn't been past seven years, the federal statute of limitations, and actually in Washington state, it's six years. So after six years, a debt collector cannot sue a client. And I know a little earlier, I made it sound like from the time the debt collection agency acquires the account, but it's actually six years from the date that of the initial late payment on that account that led to it being sent to collections. So they can wait six months or three years to send it to collection. Mm -hmm. So, so going back, yeah, sorry, yeah, remember. question. So basically, I want to make sure you said, I want to make sure I heard it correctly. You said it's when they report the debt, the, the first time they report it. So it's the first, it's not the debt collection account, it's mm -hmm. the initial debt. Right. So say I owe Chase Bank right. and I default on that credit card. Right. Well, it's the first late payment gotcha. that led to that card being gotcha. charged off. So okay. um, it'd be the first 30 day late that reported that you see it on the credit report and it just continues to go 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, charge off. Right. It's from that first late payment. Gotcha. So six years is the state in Washington state where we're at, the state statute of limitations, and seven years is the federal. So after six years from that initial late, they cannot be sued. And after seven years, it cannot report on their credit. Mm -hmm. So the law, says, the law states that it's seven years from the date of last activity so that's where that payment can come into play mm -hmm. and can be counted as last activity. Mm -hmm. So when we're telling a client not to pay a debt collector, it's mainly because one, it doesn't remove it. Mm -hmm. Two, the debt collector has to furnish all the proof and the burden is on them mm -hmm. after a client has hired us to mm -hmm. deal with their credit. Mm -hmm. And the debt collection agency has to prove that they have the legal right to report on the credit, that they have all the correct documentation, and that everything is reporting accurately. If they can't prove it, it has to be removed from the credit report by law. Mm -hmm. And so they might not take it off real quick and easy. They might send all the paperwork and continuously send it. But if the paperwork's not correct, then it's 
more disputable reasons mm -hmm. why we can get that account removed. Mm -hmm. So really this is just to clarify because a lot of people think I'm saying don't pay your debt. That's not true. You want to pay your debt because that's part of building your positive credit history. Mm -hmm. But when I say don't pay a debt collector, it doesn't mean that you'll never pay them, mm -hmm. but it means through our process, mm -hmm. we want to have that debt collector hold the burden of proof. And we want them to prove that all the information on there is accurate, timely, and verifiable. Mm -hmm. If they can't do that, they have to remove it from the credit report. Mm -hmm. Now, if they remove it from a credit report, technically, that clock is still ticking for the six-year limit for them to be sued. Mm -hmm. But if the debt collector doesn't have the right information to prove that the client owns that debt, how are they going to prove it in court? Mm -hmm. So it's very rare, but still possible, that we see a collector come after a client mm -hmm. after the information has been removed. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Does this follow along the lines of consolidation of debt? So consolidation of debt would be a little bit different. That would be more like I have a, two credit cards that are nearly maxed out and I want to get a consolidation loan. So that would be taking those two credit cards and putting them into one at a loan that's at a lower interest rate. Um, consolidation loans will allow you to consolidate debt collections into it, but again, Paying that debt collector doesn't remove it from the credit, and there's really a minimal increase when that debt collection updates to a zero balance. So I wouldn't recommend people include debt collections in their consolidation, because right now, really, we're averaging about an 85% deletion ratio with collection accounts, because a lot of them aren't actual debt collectors. They're debt scavengers or junk debt buyers. Mm -hmm. So again, I say I owe Chase a thousand bucks on a credit card and they Chase charges it off. Well, Chase gets a tax write off for doing a charge off. It means that they took a loss on it. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, they have policies and insurance in place to protect them when things like that happen. Mm -hmm. Then they take that debt and sell it for pennies on the dollar to a debt collector. So when that debt collector gets it, that thousand dollar debt, they include fees and interest and all kinds of junk on there. Mm -hmm. And when you pay them, Chase isn't getting any money. It's all going straight to the debt collector. Mm -hmm. And that's paying these debt collection agencies huge commissions. Mm -hmm. I mean, those guys that call you on the phone, the reason they're so aggressive they're commission-based employees. Right. And there's huge commission in there on junk debt. Mm -hmm. So really, the, we, we take it and put the burden of proof on them, and that's why I tell people to never pay their collection accounts unless they give them a letter saying that when, once it's paid, it's gonna be deleted from your credit report, or and or they have furnished all the required documentation. Mm 